you in the middle of worship, don't stop your worship. It's going to be a breaking that's going to continue to happen. We shall pray. Go to the first chapter. I will praise you. I'm going to try my best to get through this. Jonah, the first chapter. Hey, hey, shut up. I, will you. I feel you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for being present. I feel you, Holy Ghost. Thank you for standing in the room. I feel you, Holy Ghost. I will pray. You had it. If you can say amen, I know the battle that I got the answer to the other days. Stand with me, Lord. Not so much. You don't know the book. I will pray. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Oh, cry, children, cry, 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 children, cry. You have another one. Oh, oh, oh. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to preach. I don't know. I will. I will. I praise you. Yes, Lord. We don't want to run. Even in the south, we don't, we don't want to run from you. We don't want to run from you. Oh. Oh. We can't run from you now. Oh. Not this time. Not this. No, 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 no. Oh. Not this time. That is the son. We can't run. We can't run. I know what's going to happen, so I'm going to do this while we're doing this. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa. And he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea. And there was a mighty tempest in the sea so that the ship was like to be broken. Then the marinas were afraid and cried every man unto his God. And cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down into the sides of the ship. And he lay and was fast asleep. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise, call upon thy God. If so be that God will think upon us that we perish not. And they said, everyone to his fellow, come. Let us cast lots that we may know for whose cause this evil is upon us. So they cast lots and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then say unto him, tell us, we pray thee, for those whose cause this evil is upon us, what is thine occupation? And whence comest thou? What is thy country? And of what people are you? And he said unto them, I am a Hebrew. And I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, which hath made the sea and the dry land. Then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, Why hast thou done this? For the men knew that he fled from the presence of the Lord. 
because he had told them. And they said unto him, what shall we do unto thee that the sea may be calm unto us? For the sea wrought and was temptuous. And he said unto them, take me up and cast me forth into the sea. And so shall the sea be calm unto you. For I know that for my sake, this great tempest is upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring it to land, but they could not, for the sea wrought and was temptuous against them. Wherefore, they cried unto the Lord and said, We beseech thee, O Lord, we beseech thee. Let us not perish for this man's life, and let not upon us innocent blood. For thou, O Lord, has done as it pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and cast him forth into the sea. And the sea ceased from her raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly and offered a sacrifice unto the Lord and made vows. Now the Lord had prepared a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and three nights father as i begin to preach teach your word i pray oh lord god that you would speak through me oh lord god speak what you want to say god and how you want to say it hide me behind his calvary's cause god don't let them see me but let them see you father let them see you speaking directly into them into their situation into their circumstance into their frustration god let them see you god speaking directly to them in the places that they're on and Father, as we begin, oh Lord God, on this journey, I pray, oh Lord God, that you will send angels of assistance, oh Lord God, to come into the room, God, with new instructions, God, bring strength right along with you, Lord. Father, for your people need new strength, oh Lord God. And so, Father, while they're coming, God, bring, oh God, yes, Lord, bring, oh Lord God, what we need, oh Lord, to stay in the race. Bring, oh Lord, what we need. And let it feel, let them feel it, God, uh, while I'm preaching. Let them see themselves, God. Uh, don't let them shovel it over, God, but let them rake it in. Let them see themselves so that we can come to you, Lord God, in a place of repentance so that we can return unto you in the place, in the position, in the posture that you called us to. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say, thank God, amen. Y'all be seated. Sydney, you can keep it on, actually. I like it. Keep it on. And so, as y'all know, we are in our newest series of denying destiny. And when God was giving me this series, I'm going to be honest with you. I literally was kind of a little offended because I was like, God, I'm not denying my destiny. I'm doing what you tell me to do, and I'm doing it the best way I know how. I don't see how this is relevant to us. Then he gave us Peter from last week, and I began to see myself. To see that I had not actually really decided upon destiny because every time I denied it, I went back to the things that were comfortable. And I really thought this was going to be over. Later that night, he said, Jonah. Now, I know the story of Jonah. So I'm like, bruh. <laughs> bruh. Lord, why am I Jonah? I, why? What I do? I saw Peter in me. I did. But Jonah? I mean, like, he deliberately was like, no. I said, Daddy, I ain't do you like that. He said, Okay, that was Saturday, last Saturday, when I was good, and I was happy, and I was stronger, and I had a little more strength, and then, and then, and then 
the week happened. Somebody say the week happened. And I was right back saying, God, I don't know if I want this. I don't know if I want to do this. God, I don't know if I can do this. God, I just feel like, you know what, let's, let's just, just call it quits. Ask me if the Lord said anything. Absolutely not. Until this morning. Ask me what he said. Jonah. Jonah. So I said, all right, let me go read this chapter, Lord, because apparently Jonah has my answers for this moment. So I began to pull up the scripture, you guys, and I began to come to another understanding of Jonah. And the first thing you got to understand is Jonah was given a command to go to Nineveh. Nineveh. And in my mind, it never really said why Jonah said no. When you read it, it's like, go to Nineveh. My judgment's against them. I'm going to Tarshish. (laughs) I'm I'm going to Tarshish. I said, God, what happened Uh between go to Nineveh and the decision to turn? He He just made a decision. I mean, he just went left. And we didn't see why. So then I said, well, what's so bad about Nineveh? Because, I mean, I need to see what's up in Nineveh. Because when God tells us to do something we want to do, and when God tells us to go to a place we want to go, there's no confusion about that. We get up and we go. So I automatically assumed that Nineveh just had to be a bad place. It it just it just had to be. It just made sense for Nineveh to be just a bad place. And so and so and so of course in the scripture we understand that it said that that his judgment was against the city because the city was a wicked city, right? So I began to dig a little bit more and I began to understand that Israel was actually uh Nineveh was the known enemy to Israel. I said, oh, he didn't want to go into the enemy's territory. I said, okay. Nineveh was also known to be a great city, but a lawless one. They weren't regulated by the laws of God. They ain't know him. They did what they wanted, when they wanted, how they wanted. Scripture compared them to Sodom. So here it is. is. God is telling his prophet. Telling his prophet. I want you to get up. And I want you to go into the enemy's territory. And then I want you to tell them I'm against them. Excuse me. Woohoo, Lord. We already enemies. Don't they already know you are against them? What, what I need to go for? Hold on. Pause. You know they don't like me? Why am I going over here? You know they don't like me at their church. Why I'm going over here? You know they don't like me at my family. Why I'm going to the family reunion? You know, you know they don't like me. They ain't ruled by your laws. They don't serve you like I serve you. You tell me to walk away walk away, and they gonna want to clap back. But they're not regulated by our laws. So you want me to go over there being a prophet, and I'm afraid that the person gonna show up. I don't know, Lord. I might didn't die today. I don't. I don't. 
might didn't die to that. I, I might have died before I got here and then a new trigger then came up. I, I, this is just me. I really looked at this and said, you know what? I think Jonah knew himself and knew himself really well. I'm not even about to negotiate this with you, Lord. I'm not going over there. They might provoke me in a way I don't even know. I don't. He say, I want you to go over there. I want you to go into the enemy's camp. I want you to go to a place that don't love me like you do. Go to a place that don't worship me like you do. Go to a place that don't pray to me like you do. Go to a place that's not governed, to, go, governed by me like you are. I want you to go over there. They ain't got no boundaries. They loose everywhere. They immature. I want you to go over there. And I want you to preach in the city. I want you to preach to people that don't know me. I want you to preach to people that don't like me. I want you to preach to those people. Go to that place. Go to that place. And Jonah said, no. <laughs> Actually, let me rephrase. Because that's lying. I don't want to lie on Jonah. Jonah didn't actually say no. He didn't say no. It was... Yes, Lord. And then it was. Oh, did I hear that right? Did I? Did I hear it? Jesus' name, amen. Where y'all going? I'm about to go over here with you. I'm you can cut it out, Steve. He said he literally got from one place of a posture and literally changed his course and went to Tarsus. Somebody say Tarsus. Now, we understand that Tarshish is a coast, right? Now, Tarshish actually doesn't really have a specific meaning, but when I began to research it, I understood, or one particular thing pointed out to me. It said an uncertain location. I said, say what? Tarshish, literally, on the map, is an uncertain location. They don't know exactly where it is. Anytime you are trying to run from the Lord, you run into a place of uncertainty. You go into a place of uncertainty. I knew I was here and I knew I was supposed to go here. But now I'm going to go to Tarshish. That's the place that's uncertain. It don't have a particular place on the map. And what I noticed about the text, I'm going to teach you something. What I noticed about the text was that it kept using one word over and over and over again. I'm going to read it. Now the word of the Lord came unto Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness is come up before me. But Jonah rose up to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord and went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it to go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Hold on. Wait a minute. There's something repetitive happening here. I see Jonah doing something that I don't really think he realized he's doing. He's going down. He's walked away from his position of a peer because he's leaving the presence of the Lord. 
and he's deciding to go downward. So the Lord begins, I begin to dis- research it and I begin to see what downward really meant. And it means to go in the opposite direction of up. Of course, we know that. And at first I wanted to ignore that. But then I realized that this weekend was a weekend we were celebrating Ascension. Yeah, I'm about right. <laughs> a weekend where everybody is supposed to be in the up. Yeah. But it seems. There is a direction change, a direction shift, a movement into a lower position. I don't want to go to Nineveh. I don't want to go to a place where I feel like ain't nobody going to like me there. I don't want to go to a place where I'm going to be misunderstood. I don't want to go to that place. And so I'm going to move from my posture in heaven and I'm going to go downward into an uncertain location just so I can try to secure what I want to do. Say this with me. I know y'all don't like it. I already heard Pastor Joe before she said, "Mm -mm, I ain't saying it. Just say it with me. Say it with me because I want to I bring you to a consciousness. Say, there's a price to go up. But there's a price to go down. And many of us talk about the price that we paid to serve God. We talk about the price that we paid to be in the up. But nobody talks about the price that you paid to disobey him. There's both the price. And the truth of the matter is your price to run away from him feels a lot better, but you ain't even realizing that you still pay the price. I'm sorry. I said I want to go raise my voice today. I said I want to go raise my voice today. There's a price. There's a price. And the price of disobedience is a downward position. Mm. I am, I know. It's a downward position. You're not even sitting in your elevated place. You're not even in the place that I called you to be in. Because you don't want to preach against the wicked. Because you want to tolerate Jezebel and Delilah's. Because you want to tolerate the stuff that I'm against. You want to tolerate witchcraft. You, you, you want to tolerate she, him, and them, and ems. You want to tolerate it. You don't want to preach against it. You'd rather be lukewarm so you can fit in. You rather, you rather, you rather not take an actual stance. So you literally risk your own position with God. You risked it. Because it was a risky business because you decided to still pay a price. And literally go downward. And the Lord said to me, he said, many people have paid a very, very dangerous price. Many people have paid a very, very dangerous price. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, And I just heard something in my ear. And he literally just said, unknowingly. Unknowingly. Now watch this. Come in the room because I know everybody like, hold on. Wait a minute. He willfully... He willfully disobeyed God. He should have known. He should have known. Mm, not when you think God is a grace-giving God. Not, not when you think he's going to give you second chance after second chance after second chance. Not when you've disobeyed him and you got used to that whooping and that reprimand and then you can go right back. I don't know. Let me, that's not y'all. You know, I really, you know, I was one of them kids that was scared of whoopings. I was scared. Like, I was so scared of the whoopings, I would cry before the whoopings. Because my mama, you know, she would do this thing. She would just really whoop you until you cry. So I was like, well, I tell you what, if I start crying before I get in here, she have mercy on me. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, I know I deserve the whooping. Yeah. 
I did it. I did. I know I did it. But I knew my mama loved me. And so if I just went ahead and just showed her how sorry I was, like, mama, I'm so sorry. I did, I'm so sorry. Mama, no. Mama, no. I ain't gonna do it no more, I promise. <laughs> the whooping was a little light, light. Because yeah. in her mind, all right, she feel bad. She ain't gonna do it no more. All right. They guilt and got them. Yeah. They repented. Yeah. Let me give you some grace. And then you get up and you go do something else. And then God pop that little hand and you, Lord, I'm sorry. I ain't going to do it again. And then you get up and you're like, oh, he forgave me. Yes. All right. I'm feeling good. And time is going. And he tell you do something else you don't want to do. And you're like, mm, I'm going to go do it anyway. And then pop. What happens when you run out of grace to yeah. disobey? Because see, y'all came to thinking that you can tempt your God. But the Bible said, don't tempt your God. It is written, thou shalt not tempt his thou God. You going to keep tempting him? <laughs> You're going to keep tempting him. So bet. So uh, the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea and there was a mighty tempest in the sea. You going to tempt me? Let me match you with some temp. Let, let me match you. Let me match your energy real quick. And that's what people don't understand. Right now, God is in a place where he about to match your energy. I know y'all don't like that. I, I know y'all don't like that. I know y'all don't like that. We like to talk about the guy like he's Sandy, uh, Santa Claus, and you get to sit up on his lap, whisper in his ear, tell him good nothings, and he's going to be a present with a bow on it under the tree. No, a doggone well you ain't been good all year. No, you deserve some cold, but because mommy and daddy love you, you get... But God is sick and tired of us disobeying him in such a way that we've lost our reverence in him. Is it the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord? Come on, come on, come on. I'm going to get to that because it's in my text. But I really believe we've lost our reverence of him. We're not afraid to disobey him. We're not afraid to run away from him. As if he going to constantly chase us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they sent a mighty tempest in the sea. So that the ship was like to be broken. Somebody say tempest. A violent storm. It was violent. It wasn't just a storm. I know when people teach this in, in preschool, we teach it like, oh, it's just a storm. It wasn't no hurricane. Probably was even worse than a tsunami. It was a violent storm. To be violent is to be marked by the use of physical force and is expected to usually be harmful or destructive. Harmful or destructive. See, we used to God doing this. Come here, Dwayne. This, this is what we want. That's what we want. That's what we want. Now go back down. Let's do this again. Now pretend like you don't want to come. You got heels on. S step up first. There we go. There we go. Y'all, y'all sit in. Let's pretend like you. <laughs> now why she want to be disrespectful on this? <laughs> 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 I'm not going to let <laughs> Satan use you. Because <laughs> Satan knows you today. <laughs> you know what? Get behind me, Satan. Just move. I ain't, we're not using you no more. Just, just. I can't stand them. Now come back up and be obedient. Nah, thank you. <laughs> now this time I want you to act like you, you ain't going to come. Okay? 
I really want you to take them shoes off because I really want to kind of manhandle you a little bit. No, they're like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because I want to show you something. Because we're used to God being gentle with us. <laughs> Don't this like that. Don't can <I> preach. <laughs> you ain't got your shoes on a little because I can't step down one. <laughs> Now I want you to act like you don't want to come, okay? Now it's in my hand. Now you, this is what y'all, y'all don't y'all don't want God to do this. <laughs> what happens when God got to get violent with you to make you obey Him? Now I had her take her shoes off. Now if she wanted to still be cute, she it was probably gonna be a stomp of a toe. A heel might would have been, bro. It would have been destructive. Are y'all seeing this? It would have been destructive. Poor baby ankle could have broke, but I ain't want a lawsuit. So, you know, we didn't want to do that. <laughs> it's violent. And God is literally like, y'all about to make him get beefy with you. Y'all about to make him beef up. And move in a whole nother different way. Because you decided to move another different way. Then it says storm. Somebody say storm. storm. A disturbance of the atmosphere. Rain, thunder, all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. See, you think that God mishandling you is probably going to be in your money. Is it going to be, you know, uh, uh, with friends. It's probably going to be on your job. All that other stuff. Mm-hmm. God will disturb your entire atmosphere. He will snatch away all your peace. He will have you sit up there and don't sleep. He will snatch all your sleep. Say, ain't no rest for the wicked. Ain't no rest for the wicked. I take all your sleep from you. He said, I will disturb your entire atmosphere. Because it's a violent storm. And this is what happens when we go downward. When we literally go into a downward position, we force God to disturb our atmospheres. We force him. So almost borderline bring us into a place of destruction. I know y'all don't like that. I know y'all don't like that. Because the truth is you've been blaming the devil for your problems. <sighs> it ain't the devil. It's your disobedience. It ain't the devil. It's your decision. It's, it's your decision. It's the decision. Now I notice that it said in the storm was in a place where it almost could break the ship. So then I said, well, Lord, hold on, hold on. You didn't want to just cause the storm. You, you had to put it in a way where it was going to cause everything to be broken up. He said, yeah, because I'm after your ships. I said, hey, what, what you mean you after my ships, Lord? He said, I'm after all of your relationships. Romans 8, 35. That was just introduction. Romans 8, 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Notice the things that I described. Tribulations, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. I got a question. Don't those sound like what's? They sound like what's, don't they? But the sentence before it says, who? It didn't say what can separate us from the love of God. It said, who? And then he gave me a list of things. I said, God, these are what's. He said, "Mm -mm, you're reading it wrong. And so I had to go read all the definitions of it. And he says, tribulations. Who caused you great suffering or trouble by way of oppression can cause you to separate from the love of God? Yeah, who, who, who caused that tribulation? Who caused you a trying experience? 
Who caused you distress? Who caused you to strain or have difficulties? Or, or who caused you to be in a place where you felt like you couldn't overcome inflicting pain? Who caused you persecution? Who caused you to suffer in the places of your belief? Who caused you famine? Who caused you to have a great shortage and extreme scarcity in your appetite and your desires? Who, who caused that? Who caused you to give away your dream that I told you to have? That made you walk away from me. Yeah. That made you walk away from what I see. Yeah. I'm, I'm still going. Nakedness. Who caused you to be uncovered? Yeah. That made you walk away from me. Who caused you to be in an exposed place that made you walk away from me? Para, who caused you uh, exposure to bringing you in a place of injury or even feeling like you were destroyed or lost? Who caused you that? Sword. Who caused you to be in a place where you felt like you was ready to fight for yourself? Who caused you to be in a place where you wanted to defend yourself? Who can separate us from the love of God? And I say, hold on, Lord, you tripping, you tripping, you tripping. I say, because just because that happened don't mean we don't love you no more. He said, John 14 and 15. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So if you're turning because of a who, you've also turned against the commandments. Y'all already know most of the time it's people that'll make you walk away from God. Come on here. Come on. Think, think, think about it. Normally, out of ten, nine times out of ten. And the reason why is because everything that God does in this earth, he does it through a person. He does it through a person. So does Satan. As long as you are still plugged in the matrix, you have the ability to be an agent. But we don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but we wrestle. Against... Am I not in your book? So he said, who can separate you from the love of God? Who can get you to turn away from what I said? Who can? It's the who. It ain't the what, because the who causes these what's. The who causes these what's. The who are the ones who causes tribulation. They're the ones who cause distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, peril, sword. They're the one who cause it. But then you look at it and say, well, God, you let them do that to me. You let that happen to me. You could have stopped it, ain't you, God? Wait a minute. Oh, yeah, maybe y'all don't talk to him like that. Nisha, they don't talk to him like that. I know, I be trying to charge him up. I say, now, hold up. You, God, what you mean? What you mean? You let me. You can, you can do everything else. But what if you don't realize that he's dealing with you the whole time? I ain't dealing with them. I'm dealing with you. Because I want to know, is there any person that can cause you to walk away from what I say? I want to know how much you love me. Love is me more than these, Peter. How much you love me? You love me more than him? You love me more than her? You love me more than them? You love me more than your mom? You love me more than your kids? How much do you love me? How much you love me? How much you love me? How much you love me? Who can separate me from the Lord of God? Who can cause you to walk away from the commandments of the Lord? Commandments are not always convenient. Commandments are not always convenient. Y'all ready for this? And neither is covenant. 
Because when you and God sit down and he begin to talk to you and you begin to say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. You begin to marry what it is that he said. Do you not understand when you walk away from him, that is you signing a divorce paper? There are vows that are exchanged when it's time for covenant. What are vows? Those are promises. If you love me, keep my commandments, keep my word, keep my promises. But because of the who's and because it's not convenient, you walk away from covenant. I'm going to let that sit in for a second. Because every last one of us been guilty of ransoming our relationship with him. We've been guilty. We've been guilty. Lord, because you didn't come when I called you, I'm not going to raise my hand. Lord, because you didn't come when I called you, I'm not going to give you no type of glory. And until you give me answers, I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> I know y'all don't like this. I know y'all don't like this. Right at John, it says, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it is see it, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him. For he dwelleth with you and shall be with you. God said, if I sent you a comforter, why are you looking for it in every other place? But in the spirit of truth. You want to go find a comforter in the things that are comfortable and truth is likened to a sword. That. Is this not the book? Is it, is it not? I'm going to send you a comforter. Even the spirit of truth. Whom the world can't receive. Then he asked me a question. 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 Was, I was really offended, to be honest. Because I don't like him talking to me like that. <laughs> I'm already on the edge. He asked me a question. He said, Jay, didn't I say the world can't receive him? I said, yes, Lord. He said, why are you acting like the world? I was offended. I was offended. He said, why are you, why are you acting like them? I'm still offended. <laughs> I felt that thing going to my heart. I said, hold on. Lord, you... Oh, I still ain't got over that moment. That... Oh, they hit me. They hit me. I'm a... Oh, Lord, help me. I'm... I got to be free from that. <laughs> Why are you acting like them? Why are you acting like a person who has no truth? You're responding according to what you see, not what you've seen. Hold on. I, we, I show why you, why are you tripping? It's the truth that's supposed to comfort you. Yeah. It's the truth that's supposed to comfort you. And the truth of the matter is maybe many of us don't feel comforted because we stepped outside of the truth. Wow. And we stepped outside of the truth to look for a who. I know y'all don't like this word. I know, I know, I know, I know. But you're acting like the world. Because he said, the world can't receive me. So I was going to leave that alone. And then he said, look up the word, the definition of world. And I said, Lord, come on, man. Leave, let me be. You have already beat me up all morning. Y'all probably didn't even hear me. Y'all was in here praying and worship. I was in the bathroom screaming and hollering. I was like, Lord, I can't take no more whoopings. He said, look up the definition. 
I said, why are you yelling at me? Y'all even handled me so bad. Oh, oh, Lord. You know, we love each other, though. You know, as so I looked at the definition of world and I looked at the English definition, he said, no, nah, that's not what I want. He said, give me the Hebrew definition. <laughs> I wanted to give y'all that good old Western definition. <laughs> nah, he said, mm-mm, mm-mm, because this ain't no democracy right now. It's a monarchy. I want you to go back to the original. Give me that one. Because y'all Western dictionary want to give you choices. Now I ain't giving you no choice. Go to the definition. I said, Lord. Hebrew word for world is tebel, T-E-B-E-L. Ask me what it means. Confusion. Violation of nature and divine order and perversion. He said to me, anytime you cannot receive the spirit of truth, to bell is in play. Anytime you can't receive the spirit of truth, of truth to bell is in play. Confusion is in play. Violation of nature and divine order is in play. And perversion is in play. I said, Lord, okay. All right. Yeah, it definitely makes sense. Because the devil is not a creator of anything. But he will pervert everything. He'll pervert everything. Including what God told you. Did he really say that? He'll cause you to try to use your own concepts to make sense of God's commandment to you. And a lot of times they don't make sense. It never really does. It never really does. It never really does. No, it, it, it really doesn't. It doesn't make sense. So I really want God to kind of like be nice to us. Because I'm like, Lord, how would don't make sense, God? It's supposed to comfort us. Like, come on. Come on, be nice, be nice. He said, go back to the scripture. I said, okay. You, you, are, you are definitely in a mood today. <laughs> we're, going, we're picking up right at the fifth verse. I'm going back to the one, right at the fifth verse. Then the mariners were afraid and cried, every man unto his God, and cast forth the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it of them. But Jonah was gone down in the sides of the ship, and he lay and was fast asleep. There's a storm out. On the ocean. And it's moving. This whole way. Woohoo. Why is you sleep? You don't feel this violent storm that's happening. You don't see this violent storm that's going on. You don't see this storm that's coming in. That's going. That's literally causing us to be in a place of disaster. You, you sleep, and not just any sleep. You fast asleep. I mean, you getting a good sleep. You, you ain't even thinking about the fact that you didn't walk away from God. You like, yeah, I can sleep today. I. Meanwhile, we out here getting our butts whooped by a storm you causing. Uh huh. Come on in. 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 The Lord began to deal with me. He said, "There's an issue of awareness." I said, "Say what?" He said, see, there's a problem right now. He said, my people wants to be in delusion. They want to disobey me and then turn to delusion. 
They don't want to deal with the fact that they don't want to be aware or acknowledge the fact that they just went an opposite way of what I told them to do. So they rather sleep it away. And the Lord said to me, most storm causes are sleepers. Most storm causes are storm sleepers. They're going to try to sleep until it passes. I'm going to sweep this right on under the rug, and ain't nobody going to see it, and we're just going to act like it never happened. Because the truth of the matter, they're trying to get through their moment. <laughs> Y'all, we should have took offering first, because ain't nobody going to sow nothing today. You don't want to really deal with the fact that you denied God. So I'm going to sleep it away. I ain't going to. You going to pray today? Mm-mm. I'm going to go watch a movie. You pray every morning. But all of a sudden, you're going to turn your prayer life off. I know y'all don't like this gospel. Yeah, You're going to turn your prayer life off. You're going to go watch a movie. I'm going to go be normal. And then you give yourself an excuse. I mean, you really can't be in the clouds like that all the time anyway. You need to learn how to have some type of balance. And so, you know, I feel like I've been on a 40-day fast anyway, so I'm going to just take 40 days off. You ain't going to deal with the fact that what he told you to do when you were on the 40-day fast and you didn't do it. And you, ain't, you don't want to go talk to him because you don't want him to tell you that you're in disobedience. So... I'm I'm a, I'm a do this unconsciously. I know y'all don't like this. <laughs> Sleepers, we unconscious. We unconscious. We unconscious of the fact that we left our position. I know. I know. I know y'all don't like it. I know. I know y'all don't like it. I know y'all don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it because he was talking to me like this. <laughs> so <laughs> he's like, y'all want to deal with the fact. That you have lost your awareness to me. Your awareness to what is going on. There's a storm out on the ocean and you don't even know I'm the one causing it because you're asleep. How you don't know where my presence is? It's because you're so busy running from it. You're so busy running from the presence that you didn't realize the presence followed you. But because you're not in your rightful position, you don't know. You're sleeping it away. Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Adam, where are you? Where are you? Where God all knowing. Why are you asking him where he at? It's because he lost his consciousness. He went to sleep and don't even realize he caused a storm called sin to enter into the earth. He don't. You don't even realize that you didn't change divine order. You just go make you some little fig leaves and you and Eve just going to skip around the garden until God start calling. You don't even realize that you completely alter order. Completely alter order. Adam, where you at? I'm asleep. I'm sleeping. I'm hiding. I'm in a downward position. I'm in a downward position. I ain't out here tending my garden no more. I ain't in my position no more. I'm, I'm, I'm in a downward place. God said to me, a lot of people are not present. They ain't present because they've left their spiritual positions. They've left their spiritual positions. So you might be being spiritual. <laughs> but are you sleeping? Are you really awake to the fact that if God's presence is there or not? I just, I got questions. (laughs) 
I got questions. I got questions. I got questions. I really do. I got questions. And then the Lord said to me, he said, the only time you can get sleepers to a place of awareness is that you got to make them arise. Go to the text. Go back to the text. You got to make them arise. You got to make them arise. It says that he was fast asleep. We're at verse 6. So the shipmaster came to him and said unto him, What meanest thou, O sleeper? Arise! Get up! And call on your God. Now, if you pay attention to the text, it said that they were already calling on their gods, little G. They were calling on their gods, little G. Which means they ain't even worship the one true God. But when we get to Jonah's God, it says, call upon thy God, big G. The one true God. Why is it that people that don't serve your God got enough common sense to call upon a God that you don't? <laughs> got to be your God up in here. You don't even have enough common sense to call upon the one true God in a storm. You rather sleep it away and they calling on idol gods? I don't even blame them. They don't even know what God to call them. But you do and you sleep. Okay. I'm done. Let, 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 me, let me keep going. Because y'all looking at me with that tone of voice and I don't like it. Y'all looking at me with that tone of voice and I'm about to get real offended up in here. Say, call upon your God, man. If so be that God will think upon us that we don't perish. I know, I'm, 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 and I'm teaching slow for a reason. I'm, I'm teaching slow for a reason. I know, I got questions. I got questions. I don't want to say that. <laughs> so, um, warning. The real truth of the matter is the only way God going to get some of y'all to be aware is to start casting lots. And I know y'all don't know what they mean. I'm going I'm to tell you. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. The only way to really get some of y'all to come to a state of consciousness, because y'all didn't see, because, mm, mm -hmm, yeah, see, because the storm wasn't enough for you. You slept through it. So people got to call you out now. I'm just, I'm just planting. That's it. So now people got to wake you up. Yeah. Let me rephrase. So the world got to call you out now. Yeah. Wow. They got to call you out. Bro, come, come, come here. Come here. And we're going to cast lots. We're about to see who fault this really is. Oh, don't say that, Holy Ghost. He just asked me a question. He just said, is the world the way it is because of the world? Or is it the way it is because of the church? I really don't like how you're handling us, but Lord, we receive it. It's, it's, isn't it? Is it? Is it? Trying to wait on the earnest expectation of the sons of God. Is, that, is, that, is the earth the way it is because my people won't be sons? Mm, maybe you'd rather be spiritual but not sons. Gifted but not sons. It is. It's a huge whooping. It's, it's a huge whooping. So maybe you're not going to get it in the storm. So I'm going to call some people that don't know me, the world, to call you out. That's what you run into anyway. <sighs> so we're going to cast lots. 
to render an impartial, unbiased decision on your matter. That way, no one can argue that it was any type of human intervention on this. And the Lord began to say something to me. He said, it's called the scapegoat. He said, I'm so sick of my people looking for scapegoats so that they don't have to take accountability for what they've done. The problem with many of us is that we don't want to take ownership for our own choices. You don't want to take no ownerships. Y'all, 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 I'm telling y'all, I can prove, I can prove this in the text. You don't, you don't want to take no ownership for the fact that you left your position. You don't want to take ownership for the fact that you didn't left who you are so you can please yourself and be comfortable with yourself and comfortable with your decision. You don't want to take ownership in the fact that he called you to be up here and you want to live down here. You don't want to take ownership in that. And I can prove it. Somebody say, then they said it to him, tell us, we pray thee for whose cause this evil is upon him. What's your occupation? What you do? They start asking them questions. Why? Because they need to come to an awareness. What's your occupation? Where you come from? What's your country? What people you come from? You need to be reminded. But you're trying to hide. Until somebody call you out. You look like the man. You sound like the man. I know you was with him. No, I wasn't with him. I don't know. I know y'all don't like this type of talk. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. God is dealing with us with his destiny denying. He's, he's dealing with us. They had to start asking him a set of questions. To bring him to an awareness of who he was. Because the storm wasn't enough. Oh my God. Ooh, that's good. Wow, that is good. What happens when your trial and tribulation ain't enough? And then people got to start calling you out. Huh? Storm is still going. They trying to get an understanding. Hold on, let's, 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 let's look, let's look, let's look. This is where I'm at, because then he says, I am a Hebrew. And this is the part that I really loved, because they didn't ask him this question. He said, and I fear the Lord. Ding, ding, the dong, dong. Those questions made you remember, I'm scared of God. It, it finally... Red light, die light, just ding, just, I, I, I fear God. I'm a Hebrew. Yeah, that's who I am. And I fear the Lord. I, I find it interesting because he, 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 he answered none of the questions. <laughs> because they wasn't asking the right questions. He ain't even a man. I can't say that like that. <laughs> God just said to me, he just said, he said, you're having conversations and getting counsel from people that don't even talk like you. And it's sad that people don't talk like you. They don't even talk like you have to jog you into a place to change your communication. I don't like it. But y'all know how I go. Friend call you. Don't serve your God, but you got all the right answers for them. And meanwhile, you listening to it and you're like, God, no, man, I hear you, Lord. I wasn't trying to hear you, but I... I I, I, I hear you. I won't even go into prayer. But the truth is, they called me for prayer, and I feel like I got to pray for them. We do it all the time. We'll sleep through our storm. 
but for whatever reason, wake up for somebody else's. Keep teaching because I'm almost done. I, now I'm just chatting. You'll sleep over a storm you caused, but you'll wake up because they in it. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> oh, that's good. Because had you been in position, they never would have endured it. So you got to come to a state of consciousness and say, man, I'm a Christian, I'm a son of God. I fear him. I, I, I fear him. And that's what makes me wise. Because it's not wisdom to not fear him, to not reverence him. I know y'all don't like this conversation. Y'all next time, take offering first. He been in a rebuking place and I just... I fear him. And he ain't stopping, I fear him. He started giving his resume, the God of the heaven. Because now he got to remind himself just how God he really is. Which had made the sea and the dry land. He figured it out. See, now what it is, is I had already ran from you on land. I forgot that you can find me on sea. There is no place that I can go. <laughs> David said it like this. If I made my bed in hell, there you will be also. I got to remind myself that you here in there, you. You in my salvation, but you was also when I was sinning. You, you here in there. Oh, all right, hold the ghost. I'm ready to be done. I'm ready. It says, then were the men exceedingly afraid and said unto him, why has you done this to us? For the men knew that he fled the presence of the Lord. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. I think I can only say it once. <laughs> he said that my people been running from me. Because they don't want to live in consciousness. Y'all want to know? I've been guilty. Don't God, don't give me another prophecy. I don't want to be responsible for this. Don't tell me nothing else, Lord. Shh, 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 shh. Don't say nothing else, Lord. I don't. I don't want to know anything else. But the reason why you don't want to know is because you don't want to be responsible for it. So to come into a place of consciousness is now you have to be responsible for the fact that he did give me a commandment, but then I also denied it. So I just made what I felt like was a worse situation into a worse situation. And then I didn't drag people. I'm getting a, along with me. I want you to take some inventory for a second. I want you I want you to take the inventory for a second. Because the truth of the matter is we got in somebody else's boat trying to run from God. Knowing that they were going into an unmarked territory. I'm about to get a chair. He went outside. <laughs> Y'all see, I stopped walking. I'm just, I'm, I'm bracing myself. He literally just said to me, he got in a boat with people that was going into an unmarked place because of the simple fact that he didn't think that they'll pick up the fact that God, he was their God or his God. You're trying to hide with people that won't pick up the fact that of who you are and who you call to be. And so you're trying to stay in places and low level places so they can't pick it up. They can't hold you accountable over there. 
They, they can't hold you accountable. That's why you got in that boat. That's why you don't call your, your prayer partner who already know what God said. You call somebody totally different that's going to agree with you. You call a whole nother person. Because you don't want what's commanded. You want what's comfortable. I know. I do too. I want to hear this. I get it. Keep reading, okay? I'm gonna keep reading because you just, I just, I just I'm, I gotta find it again because he just, so keep reading. So, all right, all right, y'all, I'm almost done. I promise I'm almost done because I need to just get that out. I'm almost done. You said I was well? Got it, okay. Got it. So, I wanna skip down to 13 for the sake of time. Because now they understand you didn't call my troubles. They understand this. We in this because of you now, right? They understand this. So Jonah and Larry tell them, all right, listen, this is what y'all going to do. Y'all can take me up. Y'all can throw me overboard. Yeah. Y'all throw me overboard because truth is I'm the reason why you being tempted like this. So just go ahead and throw me overboard. 13 is where I want to get to say, nevertheless, the man rode hard. We're in a storm. I tell you how to get rid of the storm. But to keep me, you rode harder. I say, God, why would they rather try to endure the storm versus getting out of it by taking him out the picture? And he said to me, he's in the verse in the verse. I said, what verse? He said, you got to go back up to the beginning. He said, what did he do to get on the boat? I said, he paid his way. <sighs> How many people you kept in the boat and wouldn't throw them overboard because they was loyal to you? Yeah. They was your ride or die since kindergarten. They paid their way with time. They they they, they paid their way with me. I, ain't, I know they caused in my storm right now, but I You help me build this. I ain't going to put you out of it. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just checking y'all. I'm just. I, it said they rode harder. Because now they felt responsible for him. They felt responsible for him. I'm sorry, y'all. He's showing me people and stuff. I, yeah. Dang God. All right. Because he just said to me, that's why a lot of people stay in dead churches. That's the reason why you keep what's not qualified in that position. They paid the price to be there. So you're going to work harder to make what don't work, work. Why would you do that? When you already know the reason for your storm. Okay. Yeah. That's all. I'm just, I'm going to move on yeah. and I'm done. So I was just going to do a little bit of chatting today. He said, throw me overboard. The Lord said, many people are trying to keep their word while throwing away his way. He said, many people are trying to keep their word. Your word, not his word, your word, while throwing away his way. Because the prophet is saying the only way you're going to get rid of this is throw me overboard. But they trying to keep their word, they, they going to get them to Tarshish. <laughs> 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 
We say that. But begin to examine. Because how many times you turned away from the way of God to stay loyal to somebody who wasn't? All right. All right. Let me move on. He says, he says, okay. He began to show me in scripture. He says, but it wasn't just because of that. He said they were also beginning to be afraid of me because they was also afraid of blood on their hands. You guys see it in the scripture. They was also afraid of blood on their hands. So then that's the other part of people. They're literally like, okay, God, if I do this, if I throw them away, I need to know that, 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 that this ain't going to be on me. This time it ain't my fault. Okay, I'm going to walk away. But, like, it ain't my fault. This I, I need to know the blood ain't on my hands if I throw them over. If I throw them over. You know that because they begin to, par- they begin to pray to God. Praying to a God they don't even know. They instantly got converted. Now, I ain't got time to deal with the fact that God is still so genius in the way he moves that he's still going to get glory out of your misdirection. Because they got saved, saved. They ain't just get a little saved. By the time they got to land, they done made new vows. <laughs> they, ain't, they ain't get saved enough to get out of the storm. God's so cold like that. That he'll make the bad word for you. It's good. Okay. I'm done. Then this is the last part I want to get to. This is the last part I want to get to. When you move into chapter two, I'm moving because I'm going to tell you how to get out of the fish. Because they say throw them overboard. Because it's, oh, thank you for reminding me of that. They throw them overboard. But in the scripture, it says, but God prepared. I'll prepare a way of escape. You think you're getting away with it. And the whole time, he's trying to figure out how I'm going to bump her back in the wheel, how I'm going to get him back in the wheel, how I'm going to. I'm going to prepare a way. What? I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm going to prepare a way through this. Like, I'm going to prepare a way out of the temptation for you. Yeah. I'm just tripping about the fact that you just said to me, I sent a tempest for a temptation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all. That's it. That's all I'm sitting there like you sent a tempest to lead them out of temptation. <laughs> that's it I'm moving threw him over <laughs> they caught it they, he, he began the fish <laughs> y'all caught it if y'all didn't I'm just gonna move on because he talking to me while I'm trying to talk to y'all and I'm, I'm eating it the way I need to eat it now it says then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish of the belly do y'all want me to read this whole thing because it's a little meaty okay because I want y'all to see this this is just how I'm going to close. Because I'm not hooping today. I'm tired. <laughs> oh. All right. So it says, Then Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God out of the fish belly and said, I cried by reason of my mind affliction. I cried by reason my affliction unto the Lord. And he heard, Lord, I'm about to get heavy. He heard me out of the belly of hell. I cried (laughs) and thou heardest my voice for thou hast cast me into the deep in the midst of the seas and the floods Come past me about all thy billows and thy ways passed over me. Then I said, I'm cast out of thy sight. Yet I will look again toward thy holy temple. Oh, I ain't finna deal with it. The waters come past me about even to the soul. The depth closed me round about. The weeds were wrapped around my head. Are y'all hearing this? 
I feel like I want to do it the way I want to do it, but for the sake of time, I ain't going to do that. I went down to the bottom of the mountain. You know where they like to make idols at? The earth with her bars was about me forever. I was in bondage and in prison. Yet has thou brought up my life from corruption, O oh Lord, my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord. And my prayer came in unto thee, into thine holy temple. The first thing you got to see here is that he began to remember his God. While he was in the place where he felt like was pure hell for him. What I clearly saw was there was no condemnation. I'm going to show it to you. There was no condemnation. He was lifting up his head. He was talking about his God. Even though understanding that I deserve to be in the place that I'm in. But you still hear me. You didn't see him settle there. If you go into eight, it says that they observed lying vanities forsake their own mercies. But I will sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. And I will pay that that I have vowed. Salvation is of the Lord. Ask me how do I get out the belly of a fish? You do the same thing you did to get into the ship. You got to pay the price. We ended the story the very same way we started it. He paid a price to run from God. And then he had to pay a price to get back to him. I will pay that I have vowed to you. I'm going to come back to what I said. I'm going to come back. To the covenant that you and I made. I'm going to pay that price. I'm going to sacrifice. I'm going to come back to the salvation of the Lord. And verse 10 says, and the Lord spake unto the fish. He ain't talked to Jonah. He talked to the thing that swallowed him up. And he spit him out. And put him right in the place that God told him to be in the first place. Told him to be right in the first place. I hear you, Holy Ghost. I got good news in this. I just heard it. The Bible says it takes three days. That Nineveh was a three-day journey. Say he got there in one. Say he got there in one. What if I told you if you go ahead and agree? Because you're already delaying time in your disobedience anyway. If you just agree to pay the price, God can accelerate it and put you back in position. And it won't take as much time for you to get back in position. So he put him out right where he belonged. And then told him again what he wanted him to do. God said, I need my people to stop running from me. And you're running because it's convenient to run. You're running because it's comfortable to run. You're running because you're making connections with people that don't even speak my language. You're running. I know. I know y'all don't like this word. I don't like it. No one wants to pay this price. I like when you talk to me like that. Like almost like the first nice thing he said all day. <laughs> he said, if only they would understand the type of price it is. If you look at the text, it said the price of salvation. That you realize the price had already been paid for you. It's already been paid. 
You just got to mark the way of the perfect man. You just got to go the way he went. And the way he gone sometimes came with betrayal. Sometimes came with denial. Sometimes came with a nevertheless. It sometimes came with rejection because a prophet don't receive honor in his own home. Sometimes comes with abandonment. His ways sometimes come in ways that we don't like. But that way was perfect. When we shift our perspective and understand that the only way we're going to be comforted is by the spirit of truth, and that if the truth of the Lord hurts, then it's actually meant to hurt because it's also meant to help. You'll stop running from this place called the altar. Because that's what happens at the altar. God does alterations. You'll stop running from the places he's calling you to. I hear you. I hear you. I would love to tell you something good and, and jump up and down and scream and all this other stuff. But y'all don't understand the times we're in. We're in decision-making times. God don't have time to keep trying to convince you to do what he's asking you to do for the sake of the time. And he don't want to have to replace you. That's what I loved about this. Is that he didn't leave Jonah to himself. He could have just said, all right, cool, I'm going to send somebody else. He didn't. He went after him. He went after him. And the one thing I can actually be grateful for is that God keep constantly coming after me even when I'm running from him. God could have picked somebody else if he wanted somebody else. But he wants you bad enough to chase you. Bad enough to send a storm to you. So that that storm will put you back into position. Because you unconsciously don't understand you've left it. Stand on your feet. Oh, yeah. 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 Yeah.